Hello everyone, this is Dr. Alex Avila with Love University and we're back. I'm an author, psychologist, and speaker. Every week we talk about how to love ourselves, others, and a higher nature, how to improve our finances, career, health, relationships, and spirituality. I also want to make an announcement. I will be live in person for a free event, November 10th, 7 p.m. at the Brea Community Center, room A, upstairs, second floor, talking about riches without limits, invincible you, how to activate your inner power, your inner knowledge and wisdom, and achieve your dreams and riches, not just in the financial sense, but also in terms of health, love, happiness, and success. So if you want to go, it will be at the Brea Community Center, Community Room A, at One Civic Center Circle, Brea, California. And you can click on the link below for more information. And we've been talking about my best-selling book, Love Types, Discover Your Romantic Style and Find Your Soulmate. Last week, we introduced the Love Type System, which can help you find your compatible soulmate based on the theory behind the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, the most popular personality test in the world. We also offered you, the listeners, the free Love Type Quiz. If you haven't already taken the quiz, go to lovetype.com and click on the quiz link. With your results, you will discover your own love type, your unique romantic style, and the love type of the person who is most compatible with you for a long-term relationship or marriage. Let's look at your results now, starting with the first dimension of the love type system, the energizing dimension. In other words, how do you primarily get your energy, from your own thoughts or from other people? Are you what's called an introvert or an extrovert? The Love University students, do you get rubbed up when you are surrounded by people socializing and doing things in the outside world? If so, you're the extrovert, and you scored the letter E on the Love Type quiz. You make up the majority of society, about 55% of the population. Or are you the kind of person who treasures your own company most of the time, and is rejuvenated when you read, think, write, or meditate with silence as your only companion? If so, you are the introvert, and you receive the letter I on the Love Type quiz. As an introvert, you are part of a minority, about 45% of society. If you're an extrovert, you like to express your thoughts and feelings in a relationship. You want your partner to give you constant feedback so you know how the relationship is progressing. On the other hand, if you're an introvert, you believe the most cherished moments in a relationship are spent with your loved one in a quiet, intimate setting. In this cozy cocoon, you enjoy gazing into your partner's eyes lovingly, speaking only when you have something meaningful to say. When an introvert is coupled with an extrovert, the problem is that conflicts can easily arise. For example, extroverts frequently want to go out with or without their mates and have fun with a lot of people. Introverts, on the other hand, often like nothing better than to spend quiet time with their loved one at home or in a peaceful setting. Of course, introverts like to go out at times and extroverts like to stay in but their natural tendencies are what guide them most of the time. One research study shed light on the problems that can arise when introverts get involved with extroverts. In the study, it was found that male introvert with female extrovert pairings reported more problems than any other introvert-extrovert combinations in the areas of sex, chores, friends, finances, and communication. The findings may be explained in part by the way society shapes male-female roles in intimate relationships. Although society is gradually changing, Men have been traditionally socialized to be the speakers and leaders in the community, while women have been more trained to be more quiet and passive. Thus, introvert men who have been raised this way may feel intimidated and overwhelmed by outspoken extrovert women. At the same time, an extrovert female may interpret their introvert man's quiet nature as representing weakness and submissiveness, and she may lose respect for him as a result. Now, one interesting point is that being an introvert doesn't mean that you're shy. Let's eliminate one popular misconception right now. If you're an introvert, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're shy. As we have already defined it, introversion is a preference for getting your energy, the life force that makes you get up and do things, primarily from your own thoughts and by spending time alone. Shyness, on the other hand, is a state of anxiety in which a person is afraid of rejection, ridicule, or embarrassment. To prevent such a catastrophe, shy people tend to avoid others to protect themselves from being humiliated or rebuffed in social settings. Now, you may be a non-shy introvert, someone who is very comfortable and confident with people, talking with them, being with them, and entertaining them. But because your social energy is limited as an introvert, you tend to become tired if you have to be around too many people for too long, taking too much and exerting too much of your energy. To rejuvenate yourself, you need to spend time alone, far away from energy-draining crowds. 
Now, if you're a shy person, whether you're introvert or extrovert, you may benefit from reading my book, The Gift of Shyness, which talks about how shy people can embrace the positive sides of being shy. They're sensitive, deep thinkers, empathetic, but they also have this so-called self-conscious side. I call it the self-observer, the part of you that's always looking at you and saying, you're going to make a mistake, you're going to look foolish. So our goal in The Gift of Shyness, and also in shyness work that I do with others, is to reverse the observer and become more of the actor, the part of you that is spontaneous, free-flowing. Think of an actor or actress that you admire, someone who's confident, has a great persona, and you can imitate them. Perhaps in the mirror at home, you can imitate their body posture, some of their expressions and vocal characteristics, and start to adapt the actor. Or maybe you can develop your own actor or actress within, the part of you that is confident, free-flowing, and spontaneous. By the way, Jonathan, my producer, I know we talked about this in the past. Would you say you're more of an internal energy person, what we call an introvert, or more external energy, what we call an extrovert? Um, I consider myself an, an introverted extrovert, so I like going out, I like partying, spending time with people, but uh, I feel like every so often, I always just like need to stay home, recharge my batteries, you know, watch some movies or something, you know, just like, if I'm out like for a week and I need a day to recover, you know. For Jonathan, there are two possibilities here. First of all, there are people who are what we call ambivert. They can go between introvert and extrovert uh, at times, but a lot of people do have a preference. For example, their energy is internal, and they can go out and socialize with people, but then they get tired, and then they need to recharge their battery, take a hot tub, and relax. Other people, the extrovert personality types, may start out slow because they're shy. Now, you may be what we call a shy extrovert, which means that in the beginning, you're a little uncomfortable until you get to know people, and then you can be the life of the party. Does that sound like you, Jonathan? Yeah, that sounds like me. Normally, I'm kind of quiet if it's like a group of people that I'm not familiar with, but when I'm comfortable, I can be Kind of annoying. <laughs> well, Jonathan, annoying is possibly your self-conscious observer saying that, you know, you're going to look uh, foolish or something. But the truth is that once you get comfortable as a shy extrovert, you can really dominate the conversation and be the life of the party and stay out very late at night. Now let's talk about a very important part of this is what happens when introverts and extroverts get together, they start dating and in a relationship and possibly marriage. And sometimes they may even get tired of each other because of their differences and they don't respect and appreciate each other's style. As you begin to date someone new, always be aware of that person's social energy style and his or her need or lack thereof to talk things out. In the beginning, being with extroverts can be exhilarating, especially for introverts. And when first dating introverts, their calm, relaxing style can be a refreshing pause for the high-energy extrovert. But as the novelty wears off, both introverts and extroverts need to be aware of the compromises they may make and the benefits they can gain when they're with someone who possesses a different social energy style. Sometimes it works out well, but sometimes it can be a big challenge. Now, although there can be some challenges, it's true that introverts and extroverts can have successful relationships. The key is for the partners to appreciate and respect each other's style. For example, an extrovert can appreciate the introvert's quiet, calming nature, and they can also respect their need for alone time to recharge when they're overstimulated socially. At the same time, an introvert can appreciate the way the extrovert can get them out of their shell to socialize. They can also respect the extrovert's need for social time by joining them on certain social activities or being okay with them when they go out alone at times. When each one understands and respects the other, the introvert and extrovert can build a complementary relationship that merges their strengths into a greater whole that is beautiful to see. Love your Russian students, the key is to first embrace and understand your own social energy style. If you're an internal energy person, introvert, it's okay to be alone at times. It's okay not to go out to all the social events. You don't have to be going along with the crowd because you enjoy your own company or a few close friends and your love partner. If you're an extrovert and you like to go out a lot, that's fine too. It doesn't mean you're a responsible or a party person. It just means you enjoy other people's social energy and that's where you get your energy. By the way, next week, stay tuned because we're going to talk about another crucial love type dimension. The couples need to be the same on or similar. That is called the focusing dimension. Are you practical or imaginative? What do you focus on? Do you focus on your imagination, creativity, or more of a practical, realistic, down-to-earth nature? And this is one of the most important elements that will determine whether you'll be in a fulfilling marriage or a miserable, empty marriage. So love University students, if you are single, we're starting a new series of Finding Your Soulmate with the Love Type Approach. We actually come on the show live, and we match you up with three potential people that could be compatible with you based on the love type system. It's a lot of fun. And to get involved in this and also to leave a comment on today's show or anything you want to talk about, 
You can reach us at loveuniversallylove at gmail.com. Call us at 310-226-8090. Visit us at loveuniversally.love. You can also download the podcast on Podbean, Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes. And you can follow us and like us on Facebook and Instagram at Love Universally Podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter at Love Letter You Podcast. You can subscribe to our Love University channel, and you can pick up a copy of the bestseller Love Types, who has become a classic, helping over 40 million people find their soulmate on Amazon.com. So love your university students. Let's go out and have a compatible week with yourself first. Love yourself, and then you can find someone who will be compatible with you and love them as well. So put away your notebooks, your iPads, your phones. Class is now dismissed. This is Dr. Avila. <laughs>